In this lesson, we're going to redefine some essential object-oriented terms and programming concepts. If you're eager to get to some code, feel free to skip ahead. And if any terms are confusing, you can always return to this video for the conceptual overview. All of these terms are defined in the glossary in the working files, as well as here. And you should keep the glossary handy to look up any terms you might have forgotten. It may be a little disorienting having all these new terms floating around, but we can't talk about classes without these terms. They're central to the paradigm. You'll also find out that these terms are in common use anytime anyone is discussing objects and classes online. As we mentioned, a class is a kind of factory, for an instance. This factory contains a blueprint which describes how to make instances. Instances, or objects as they're also called, are constructed from the class. In most cases, multiple instances can be constructed. Again, the class is the factory and the blueprint, and the instance is a kind of a widget coming out of the factory. So the structure of each instance will be identical to every other instance. As we saw in an earlier lesson, every instance has a set of attributes. These attributes are defined in the class. So every instance of a particular class is expected to have the same attributes. In the code example here at the bottom, we have a string which we're labeling var. As you may know, any string will have access to the upper method. Thus, any string that is created is part of the string class and therefore has an upper method. The string class defines upper, and thus all strings constructed will also have access to that callable attribute. Remember, I'm calling a method a callable attribute. So every method is an attribute, but not every attribute is a method. Type is just a term meaning the type of object, which really means which class the object comes from. We may say that an instance is of type string, or we may say that it came from the string class. Remember, we defined an object as a unit of data of a particular type associated with functionality. We'll get to the data in a little bit, but let's review the term method. A method is really a function defined in the class that can be used by the instance. So look at the example below. What type of object is var? It's a string. So we can say that it is of the string class and that it is of type string. We can also call it a string object or a string instance. And on the last line, we can say that we're calling upper method on the string object or instance. Let's talk about these terms and about classes and creating instances a little more conceptually. Here's a real world metaphor for our class and its instances. Again, we're indicating the metaphor of the factory blueprint that produces instances. In this case, we might consider a car factory that produces cars. All the cars are mostly identical and that they do the same thing. In our limited example here, we can say that cars can start, stop, and honk the horn. All the instances can do this. This is from the blueprint, and all of it is defined in the class. So now let's introduce a new concept, the idea that each instance has its own data. Again, remember the definition of an object, a unit of data with associated functionality. Now we're seeing it fully realized in this metaphor. Each car can stop, start, and honk. In code, these would be rendered as methods. But once they come out of the factory, each car has other attributes which are specific to that car. The car's speed, for example, or whether its doors are open and closed. Once the instance is constructed, it can set its own values to its attributes. What you should notice is that the type of values that are being held is the same between each of the instances. In other words, they all have a speed attribute, they all have a left door attribute, they all have a right door attribute. But the state of those values is different for each car because each car is being used differently. So there's a difference between the blueprint, which is defined in the class or the factory, and the state of each instance, which is defined by its use. Let's look at what the code might look like if it was the story of a car factory producing two cars. What you see there in capital C car, that's the class. We happen to be passing a color value to the constructor. We'll get into that a little bit later. But if we want to produce a red car, we pass red to the car constructor and we get back a new object. You may remember from one of our earliest examples that this constructor produces a new object and this is an object of type car. We have red car and blue car. We could have called these X and Y. It doesn't really matter what we called the variables. 
What matters is that what came out of the car constructor is a car object. So now, whether it's red car or blue car, we can call, start, stop, open left, etc. on each of these instances. The state of each car will change depending on what we call. So the red car may have an open left door and a closed right door, etc. Blue car may have started, red car may stop. This is what we call the state. And we're going to see that it's possible to set additional attributes in each object that indicates its state. Here's another theoretical example that I sometimes use in my in-person class to illustrate what classes and objects mean. Consider an ATM machine. Before you slide your card into the machine, the machine's a little bit like a class. In other words, it knows how to do a bunch of things, but it's not able to do any of those things because it hasn't been turned into an instance. Once you do slide in your card, however, it's more like an instance. In other words, it has a piece of data to hold on to. Remember the definition again, a unit of data with associated functionality. Now the ATM is prepared to do all the things it was designed to do. Before you put your card in, it was just the idea of an ATM. Now that it knows who you are, it's your machine. It can refer to you by name. When you press the withdraw button, it'll be withdrawing from your account. When you press the check balance button, it'll be checking your balance. So in this lesson, we introduced and defined a set of terms and also introduced the concept of instances having their own data or state, as well as access to common functionality defined in the class. If anything's confusing about instances and classes at this point, think about the metaphors that we've been using. You can also keep this video handy to refer back to as we look through examples, but it should all come clear.